Hi everyone! So today's video is going to be about dimensioning. So I wanted to go through a little bit about the settings I have on my preferred dimension style and how you can go about dimensioning a drawing quickly and efficiently as well as kind of in accordance to drawing conventions. So first things first, if I go over here, this is my preferred dimension style. So first of all, I have a dedicated layer for this dimension style, um, and I've called it just dimension style, but you could give it a different name. But just to give you a little bit about how I'm working with this. First of all, it's an annotative dimension. And right now I have it at this 1 to 50 scale, but Essentially, it's going to depend on kind of the, the scale of the drawing that you're going to be making. But annotative is going to mean right now, if I deselect this, it looks around this size. If I change that annotation scale to 1 to 100, text gets bigger. Change it back to 1 to 50, text gets smaller. And that's why it's really beneficial to have that annotative text. Um, that annotative dimension style because it means you're going to not have to worry about teeny tiny fonts or really huge fonts when you have a drawing. It'll actually automatically scale it for you. So then if I select this, I can see a couple of other things. I like to use the architectural tick rather than arrowheads, and I like to make sure those are at 2.5 when I'm working with millimeters. Um, for anyone using imperial dimensions, I usually try to keep it around um, 330 seconds. Um, that's going to be a personal preference. Ultimately, you could use the arrowheads if you wanted to, uh, but essentially you just want to make sure you have something that terminates the dimensions and that they're going to be at a good size. So the next thing I always like to double check that I have done is I want to make sure I don't like having a huge extension line extension, so to speak. Um, basically, that's where it's going to go above. So if I made this a bit bigger, you can see it goes a little bit taller. I like to keep mine at just a little bit shorter. And then the extension line offset, that is when you have an offset of your kind of this witness line of the extension. And this is the point that it's measuring between the two points. But this offset is the dimension that you kind of have between the, the symbolic annotation of the dimension and where it's measuring itself. Now, most of the time, 15 is going to be pretty good, but this is going to be something that you would adjust depending because it's typically not good practice um, for interiors drawings to have those lines really touching exactly on the drawing because it can actually start to make your drawing hard to understand. So you want to kind of make sure the lines itself are pulled back and you just re rely on that alignment instead. So those are my basic kind of settings for an annotation, st an annotative style dimension. So let me move this one up. And now let's go in into how we can actually play around with these as dimensions. Now, if you go to the annotate tab, you can actually set a bunch of things up right here. So I'm going to make sure I use this dimension style that I've already kind of talked us through here and make sure I'm on the right layer. And then it's a matter of you can play around with the different dimension styles. So you can do linear, aligned, all these different things. You can also do things that are more continuous. So I'm going to show you what that means in just a second. I typically like to use a linear dimension just because, I mean, this design spe specifically is quite orthogonal. There's not any angles or anything like that. So a linear dimension will be absolutely fine. So to do the linear dimension, I'm just going to click it. And all I need to do is click and click, and lo and behold, I have measured this dimension here. Now again, right now my dimension offset isn't that great, so I'm going to pull this back, and let's do it at 15. There we go. And now what I'm going to do is take this dimension line and continue it. So I click continue. And it knew I wanted to continue that one there. And what I'm going to actually do is, let's just do this one here first. There we go. Enter. So all I did here was I dim dimensioned the width of this space and then the dimension from this corner to the inside of this one. And these are going to count as kind of my overall dimensions over here. 
So now I'm going to do some more dimensioning and we're going to do the same thing of linear dimensions and then continuing them out. All right, and with that, we do have these dimensions. Now, this has highlighted we have a couple of areas that, in terms of the design, we would probably want to refine because you would never want to put a decimal point behind a millimeter just because no one would ever be able to construct with interiors at that precision. But that regardless, we're looking at these dimensions now, and what we've done is we've given ourselves the overall dimensions on the outside, and we've looked at some of these more in between dimensions happening kind of in the inside and that's going to be that hierarchy that you need for dimensions to really make sense according to conventions now one thing i've noticed is that these are all going to have really close um, extensions and so i want to adjust those so i'm going to select them all on this side first and right now it's set at the 6.25 i'm going to do this one at 25 and maybe 20. Mm. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it a little bit because I want it to be where it's not touching the drawing itself. And then I also need to make it where these are visible. And there we go. I think that one's fine. And let's adjust this one here. So this one I'm going to go back and this one I think I can get away with 15. And this one, we're going to have to do some adjustments, but let's do 25, 15, mm, yeah, that's fine. So now what I'm going to do is actually make some adjustments here. So I'm going to pull these back a little, just where they're not touching my drawing. Last but not least, let's adjust this one. And I think I'm okay with that. That way we have some that are um, you know, close to this wall, some are pull it away there. And then last but not least, let's do this top one. And this one is also gonna be one that we need to probably stretch these back up. Stretch these back up, Oop, not there. Needs to be hitting the the inside and now let's select them all and adjust that extension offset so this time I'm gonna probably get away with 12 there we go and just pull this one there perfect so with that we actually have really quickly uh, dimension drawing so we can actually see where any of these little partition walls and things like that are happening and we have it in a hierarchy and we have it pulled off the drawing and it's at a correct size for a 1 to 50 drawing and all because all we did was set up our dimension style to be annotative with the right kind of settings that we want for our preferences such as the architectural tick and then we used just linear um, dimension lines and then continuing those over to make sure they remained aligned and that's going to be how you want to approach dimensioning a drawing quickly and making sure those follow that kind of hierarchy that's expected within architectural drawings like this for interiors hope that helps
If you liked that video, check these out and click to subscribe where you'll be the first to see new videos I release every Monday. Thanks for watching!